Welcome to yet another video. Today is going to be a little bit of a celebration because I recently passed my NIME trainer assessment. So I'm now a NIME certified trainer. And in order to achieve that, I had to teach a course on a certain topic. So I decided to pick a topic by myself and create it from scratch. And that is how to automate report generation and email distribution with NIME. So I've done some post editing to make it a bit shorter and tidy things up here and there. But other than that, it's my raw submission to the NIME team based on which I was granted the NIME trainer certification. So with that said, let's get straight into it. Enjoy. Welcome to today's session. I'm really excited to share with you today how you can take the tedious process of generating reports and distributing them via email to the next level using NIME Analytics platform. Today's session is for you if ideally you are at NIME beginner level. So that means you've started building some workflows already. Maybe you've even ventured out into building a component with a composite view and you're now looking to take your job automation to the next level and want to see a real world use case and follow along. Today can also be for you if you're not yet familiar with NIME Analytics platform and you want to see a real value add use case in action to see why you really should start picking up NIME and add it to your toolkit. My name is Martin Dieste and I'm a NIME enthusiast and also a NIME certified data analyst and data scientist with a specialization in natural language processing. I'm also aspiring to become a NIME certified trainer. That said, let's look into today's learning objectives. So at the end of this session, you will know how you can turn your existing data apps that have composite views into static reporting pages. And once you've done that, you will know how you can combine them into one report that can be saved as a PDF or HTML or image. And once you've done that, you will learn how to use the email processing extension, the email connector node to connect, establish a connection to your own email address. And using that email connection and the report, you will be able to generate an email with either the report attached as an image or as a PDF and to send it to a group of stakeholders. And all of that automatically with the click of a button. In order to follow along, there are two extensions that are required, the powerful NIME reporting extension and the NIME email processing extension. So if you don't have them installed yet, um, I suggest that you either go to the NIME hub and find some and then drag and drop them into your NIME Analytics platform, or you search for them using the install extensions menu in your NIME Analytics platform. I've prepared for you today a very practical use case or so parts of the workflow we will build and modify uh, live in the session. Other parts for brevity I've pre-prepared and I will walk you through the important notes and their configurations. The example is about turning the composite views of three data apps from freely available workflows on the NIME hub, one for employee turnover, one for customer churn, and one for revenue growth into individual reporting pages to start with. And after that, finding a way to merge them into one report that is then attached to um, an email and sent to a group of stakeholders. So that said, let's get straight into NIME and let's first have a bit of a look at the workflow. So there's some data pre-processing happening. I've moved all the pre-processing from each of the three example workflows in here, just to keep the view a little bit clean. Doesn't really matter for this course what's going on there. What matters are these three data apps, one for revenue growth, one for employee turnover, and one for customer churn that come out at the end. And these are the views that we want to turn into one report. So let's have a look at the revenue growth one as an example. So we have two bar charts at the bottom in the composite view. 
And at the top, we have a widget that allows for some interactivity. So whenever we change the radio button to a different year, our view at the bottom is refreshing. And the other two data apps look similar. And both of them share this radio button with the three years 2021 to 2023. So first step that we need to do in order to turn them into individual reports is to initiate a reporting template. So in my node repository on the left hand side, you can already see I've filtered for the reporting extension and somewhere in the middle is a report template creator node. So this node has a blue square output port, which is labeled empty reporting template, which we can initialize with this node. Let's have a look at the configuration. The configuration menu allows us to select the page size from a drop down menu and then to decide whether we want our report in portrait orientation or in landscape orientation. For now, we'll just leave it all at the defaults. You will notice that none of our data apps for now have a blue square input port for a reporting template. And that's what we are going to change next for that. Let's navigate inside the component. So right click onto the component, select component and then open component. For now, we don't have to change anything on the workflow logic and we can go straight to the open layout editor button in the top left. And in the bottom left corner, we see a checkbox to enable reporting. And that's what we're going to do. If we now navigate back out of this component, we can see that we have a blue input port and an output port as well. So let's connect it. When we now execute the node, we get a preview of the output port and we can also open that in a new window. And as you can see, you will see the gray outline of the page with our visuals on it and the name logo and some white space at the bottom. But there's also this warning that there's a view inside the component that is not supported. If we go back to the composite view, we can clearly see it's related to the widget where we select. And it somewhat makes sense. If we turn something dynamic like a composite view into something static like a static report, then the interactivity gets lost. So it makes sense that the widgets are not supported. That's also why we will have to do some modification to make the report look nice, because obviously we don't want this red warning on there. So let's go ahead and do that. Going back inside the component and we can see this single selection widget, which generates a drop down menu and passes the selected year variable to the row filter to filter the data. Let's copy this and let's move that outside of the component into our main workflow. What I want to do here is to pass in the selected year from the outside rather than having to select it in the composite view. So we connect the variable port and then we can go back inside the component and delete the single selection widget. However, if we now try to execute, we actually get an error. It can't find the select year variable. And that is because flow variables, as you may know, have a local scope by default, which means anything, any flow variable created outside the component is not passed inside it unless we manually change it. So let's go to the input component input node and configure. And we can see that the selected year variable is in here, but it's excluded. So let's include it. And now it executes nicely again. When we now re-execute and check out the preview, we can see that it's gone and it looks much nicer. So to save some time, I've prepared this next step. So the, the repetition to add the reporting connection and make the changes with the flow variables. I've done that already a little bit further to the right here. So now when we um, execute any of these components, uh, the widget is gone and they are all set to the same year. And now we can work towards the next step. We now have three individual pages and we want to combine them into one. So for that, there is the report concatenate node. And for those of you that have been working with NIME for a little bit, that may look quite um, familiar as uh, it looks very similar to the concatenate nodes that you use for data tables. It has a couple of input ports and it also works pretty much the same. So by just connecting the output ports of two of our 
data apps and then executing, we can already see that it's working. It's merging it nicely together onto one page. However, what I don't like is that it looked really cramped. It's on one page, so I, I'd prefer to have this on separate pages. So luckily the report concatenate node allows for that. So if we look into the configuration dialog, there's only one setting that allows us to decide if we want to have a page break inserted between different reports or not. So let's activate that and inspect the outcome again. So that looks already much better. So the last challenge is that we obviously have a third report that is not yet part of that. So luckily there are dynamic ports supported by the report concatenate node. So if you click on it and hover over it, you see this little plus button in the bottom left corner. And when you click it, a new port is added and you can do that as many times as you need. So theoretically almost infinite. And by then connecting and executing again, we now have our desired outcome, which is three pages for each of the KPIs. All right, let's now work on creating an email and sending it uh, to people. I've also pre-prepared um, that. Let's just navigate down to that. So we've left over left off here at the top. And now there are a couple of steps that we have to do. And there are actually two options. So let's start on the right. We have two outcomes. One outcome is to send an email uh, with images of the report attached. And the second one, the top lane is to have a PDF attached to the email. So was what both of these uh, pathways share is that we need an email configuration. And for that, there is the email connector node. And as you can see already, I have used a credentials widget to pass in my username, my company email address, and also my password. And that is to ensure that we can safely use it without exposing it. As you can see here, it's nicely masked what, what I've entered. So let's now explore the email connector node, which I've also pre-prepared. If we go to the configuration node, settings, you need to provide um, server data for your incoming mail server IMAP and also for your outgoing server, which is SMTP supported. So this data, this information you get from your email provider, the way that I found it, I um, Googled for my email provider and then set up Outlook or email program. That is where you need that data for otherwise. And once you find it, it's as simple as um, adding it in here. For me, it was also important to tick the box that we use a secure protocol. I then passed in the credential via this flow variable port. So let's just maybe do that as an example. You can either enter it manually, which I decided not to do, or you can click on the flow variable part and select the credentials input variable that comes in via the credentials widget and on the outgoing side for my service uh, there's authentication requi required for the outgoing mail server as well and it's tls encrypted so once that has been set up we can create our connection and this connection is then passed to the next node which is the email sender node and um, this email sender node takes in our email connection and it can take in our report if we want to send that via uh, email as images. So let's also look at the configuration dialog here. We need to provide the email that we want to send an email to, the email address. We can also pass it in via flow variable. We define a subject. We can draft um, the email with a rich text editor. And other than that, if we want to send the report as email, we don't have to do anything other than connecting the report to it. So let's now try this and send it. And let's check out my email address that I've prepared. Ah, there you can see it, it already arrived. You see it has images attached. And the way that this works is it has images attached for each of the different views. So for each bar chart, for each um, NIME image, which I personally 
am not the biggest fan of of um, distributing a report like that. That said, there might be use cases where this is uh, the preferred choice, but this is as easy as it gets um, if you want to get started. So let's now explore how we can configure this to actually send the report as a PDF. And that is a, the upper pathway. So from our report concatenate, we take a flow variable to uh, create temporary folder node. So what this node does, it creates um, yeah, is it a temporary folder with a unique ID inside the local workflow data area. So the data folder. And what we also do here is we give it a name, the variable, and we give it a value. So that's a file name and an extension .pdf. We take the variable into a path to string node, and that is to turn the PDF report path into a string. Because what the next node, the PDF report writer, will need to dynamically save our report as a PDF. So the PDF report writer has an input port for a report, which we've connected already to our report concatenate. And in the configuration dialog, you can either put in a path or browse to pass uh, on your local file system where you want to save that report. Or as I've done it, you can pass in the pass via a variable, which is our PDF report pass location variable, which is a path as a string. We can then decide what we want to happen if the output file exists already. So we can either make the workflow fail or override it. So for now, I'll change this to override. So now, once I execute this, we get an error. We probably have to reset this. Yep, the temporary folder was not yet established. The reason for that is this, this note is actually quite useful because any folder that it creates gets cleaned up and gets deleted whenever we clean the workflow. So I did not have this uh, reset before I started. So um, the past didn't exist yet. Now we've changed that. So once we have uh, written the PDF file to a folder, we can now extract the location. Um, so the path and turn it into a table row. So our flow variable that is PDF report path, which is a file system location variable type. We turn that into a table row. And then we can connect this table row to our email sender node. So the email sender node still takes in our email connection. And now in order to make it attach this PDF file that is saved in the temporary folder, we need to change a little bit the configuration. So no change to um, where we send it to or the subject or the text. But at the bottom, under attachments and brackets input column, we now can select the PDF report pass input column as a reminder that comes from this node and that points the email sender node to the report location. So let's now send it and let's quickly double check again my inbox. And as you can see, we've received it already. Monthly report as a PDF. Please find attached the monthly report. And if we open this, we have a nicer view that maintains, let's say, the structure that we've set up in our composite views. Awesome. So that was the use case that I've prepared for today. Let's briefly jump back into the PowerPoint and let's recap. So today you have um, understood how this workflow works which turns the composite views of your different data apps into one report and sends it two different ways via email to stakeholders. Specifically, you've learned how to turn the data apps into a static report, to merge them together into one report, and then to configure your own email address so that you are then enabled to send the report as a PDF or as individual images. That's it. I thank you very much for your attention. Should you have any questions after the session, feel free to reach out to me um, at martin at finnovationflows.com. That's my email address. Or you can post your questions in the NIME forum. Thanks so much and I see you next time.